Hey, Leoko Warriors, it's Captain here for you. Another Code Leoko episode review. This is going to be Code Leoko episode 21, titled Zero Gravity Zone. So let's get into it. Right after the opening, we cut to Oric practicing with his soccer team, and he's starting to kick the soccer balls into the goal, and the goalie just keeps on missing catching the soccer ball. And he's getting kind of agitated, and Oric just keeps on doing it and doing it and doing it. And it's kind of funny because in the background, we saw that some of his teammates were like doing random drills. But when they see Org just keeps getting all these soccer balls in the goal, they stop and just start to watch. <laughs> just, just starts to walk, watch Org. One Org goes to kick a ball again, and the goal is actually able to catch it. And Org's like, oh, okay. I think you're smooth. So he's like, hey, give me another ball. So one dude, you know, rolls another ball over to Org. Org kicks the ball up in the air. He does a flip, and he kicks it. And he hits the side of one, he hits one of the sides of the, of the goal. And it bangs off that side and goes into the, and goes inside the other Basically, you know a goal. <laughs> I think I'm saying it wrong, but you know, you know a goal. It bangs off the left like pipe of the goal, and the goal is like, you know, he misses, like he misses the catch, like, huh? And it keeps going, and it, and it lands in the right side. That's what happens. Everybody's cheering, like, yeah, woo, all right, all right. And Jim, like, okay, we got a big game today. Go uh, hit the sour, get some rest, uh, you know, before the big game today in the afternoon. And he walks over to Ort that's stretching out his legs. He's like, hey, Ort, I got a little bit here. You're my key to winning. You know, like, you know, you know, we got this whole team, every, you know, team spirit, hey, you're the key. And you got to be careful. There's a new guy named Matt at Lincoln High. He's a noise. Like, oh, yeah, I heard about him. I heard he's nasty. But don't worry, Jim. I got you. And while one, <laughs> while Orange is walking off screen, he, Jim is just like, yeah, we're going to kill him. We're going to massacre him. We're going to rock and sock him. And then he walks, and then we cut back to Orc, and he's still walking. And then Jeremy and Odd, the two boys right there. The squad, <laughs> the three boys in the group, they're just chilling and watching Oric and Oric, I mean not Oric, Odd gives Oric a towel and says, hey, you guys didn't have to come watch. He says, hey, what are friends for? You're here this morning? We'll be here this afternoon. And I know you're ready to see Sissy cheer you on, all right, Oric, uh -huh. And we cut to Sissy practicing her baton, uh, practicing her cheering. She has a baton, she's throwing it around, and she's singing. And I did <laughs> this is what she says, it's kind of bar, kind of bar. One, two. Three, four. <laughs> Come on, team, give us more. Five, six, seven, eight. Lincoln, we're gonna seal your fate. Pretty bars, <laughs> pretty bars right there. That's nice. That's pretty nice. <laughs> right after that, Sissy starts to throw her baton some more, and she throws it in the air, and she spins it around, and she does this. But uh, something happens. She's like, "What the heck?" When she looks up in the air, her baton is just floating. And it starts to go up, up, up until it's out of sight. She's like, what the? <laughs> she's, like, she's, like, you know, she's like, what in the world? And then we cut to Yumi. She's walking down the sidewalk to get to school. And while Yumi's walking, all the street lights around her start to flicker off and on. And then she actually starts to levitate off the ground like a couple inches. And she's like, huh? What the? Freaks out. And then all the street lights turn off. And she lands on her feet. And then the street lights start to flicker again. And they turn all the way on. And all of a Yumi's like freaked out. She, just, she, started, she just started levitating. Out of nowhere, <laughs> like, you know, that was kind of freaky. <laughs> she started levitating out of nowhere. Then we got the sissy talking to these two girls that we don't know. Just some random, some random girls she's talking to. She's telling them what we, what I just told you about her baton floating in the air. And she never came back. And they start to joke and mark sissy like, yeah, okay, you just want attention. Ain't no way your baton just kept flying in the air. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And then Nicholas and her comes out of nowhere. Comes out of nowhere. Well, they come, they come out behind a pillar. But the way they come out, it wasn't like they were just walking and it seems like, you know, the pillar was blocking them. They were just standing behind the pillar and they finally just poked out like they were hiding or something. Like, <laughs> okay. So they finally, like, come out and then they're like, hey, we believe you, sissy. I mean, even though it's not scientifically possible, the sissy brings her foot up, I mean, brings her leg up and has her foot on Nicholas's chin. And we're like, hey, if I say that something happened, it happened. I'm not making this up, Okay. And then Jeremy, Oric, and Odd are like off to the distance and they're listening in to what the city is saying. And I was like, what is, I don't know what, uh, you know, first of all, these two knuckleheads are hiding behind a pillar like some creeps. And then the city's going to do some weird leg move and like keep her leg up for like five minutes just to talk to Nicholas. <laughs> just to, I mean, just to threaten Nicholas, he's going to keep her leg up. It's just like, this, this whole scene is just weird. <laughs> this whole scene is just weird. They just come out of nowhere behind the pillar where they were just hiding. And as soon as he says it's not scientifically possible, she's going to keep her leg up like that the whole time she's threatening Nicholas. Now that's just a... That's, 
I don't know what these animators think that I was supposed to be. I guess they thought I was supposed to be intimidating. <laughs> intimidating someone. Yeah, someone does that to me. <laughs> like, anyone putting their chin up to my chin? Are you kidding me? I mean, okay, obviously, this is Nicholas. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, this is Nicholas. So he, he's not doing too much. But you know what I mean. Like, yo, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing right now? That made no sense. No sense at all. Anyway, um, right after that, we cut, after we see Odd, uh, Jeremy, and Oric listen into the conversation, we cut to the cafeteria, and they're all sitting down beside Sissy. She's walking to her seat. And everybody starts to make fun of her about, oh, look, it's a baton girl. And there's like one voice out in the distance that says, hey, Sissy, uh, make sure you hold down your burgers and fries so they don't fly away. That's a dumb joke, but I did chuckle a little bit. <laughs> I did chuckle. And um, Jeremy, you know, Jeremy, Odd, and Oric are listening into this. And Jeremy gets up at the exact same time Yumi walks in and she walks over to the table. So at the exact same time, they both slam their hands onto the table. It's like, hey, we need to talk at the exact same time. That was pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> I don't know why. I really like when they did that. <laughs> that that's pretty cool. And they both slam their hands on the table like, hey, we need to talk. <laughs> like, we need to talk. And then well, after that, Obviously, they talk. They go to Yumi's room, turn on our leader, and then Yumi tells them what just happened to her, and then they tell Yumi what she just told everybody at school. And they're like, huh, it has to be Xana. Yes, it is. Our leader just said that, hey, there's an accident tower here, so yeah, it, it is Xana. And then they're like, what? How could this even be possible? And then Jeremy says, huh, maybe it's. And he starts to uh, <laughs> say some stuff, which I gotta. <laughs> uh, talk. He says maybe Xana is using a, maybe uh, Xana has an electromagnet. Xana is using to offset the magnetic attraction of Earth. You see, and then Org's like, well, how does um wait? Oh no no, my bad. That was before. Yeah yeah. Jeremy says something else, and then Org's like, how what does electricity have to do with gravity? And then he said what I just said. My bad. That's completely forget. <laughs> I completely forget. He says something. I'm going to tell y'all. Then he was like, and then you know Org's like, what does electricity have to do with gravity um i'm gonna say it to y'all real quick because that's just <laughs> oh my goodness crazy that was ridiculous i'm talking um rambling because i'm waiting for a break to pop up anyway yeah um he says maybe it's a break in gravity causing spawn tan yosis and localized weightlessness and that's when Orcs was like, what does gravity and electricity have to do with anything? Then, right after what I just told y'all before, Yumi's like, well, how dangerous is it? And then Jeremy's like, well, normally it's not at all. But you saw what happened to Sissy's baton. And then we cut to Sissy's baton actually floating in space. <laughs> it was actually floating in space. That was pretty funny. They didn't even do that. Look at this. It's actually, <laughs> it actually went all the way to space. <laughs> and it's still floating. That was pretty funny. Anyway, right after that, well, you know, they're like, well, you know, Xana messing with gravity is pretty bad, so we can't risk it, and risk Xana getting any more power to make any anything else float up, so let's go to Lyoko, okay, let's go. As soon as they all finna get up, Ori goes, uh, I'm out. So like, what? Uh, I'm not going. I'll meet over you guys after the game. I just can't do it this time. And Jeremy's the only one that's really getting mad. He's like, what are you talking about? We have to go. This is really dangerous. He has to go save the world and make sure Xana can't control gravity. And we gotta make sure our Leo's okay. So he's probably on Leoka right now getting chased by monsters. What is your problem? And he walks over to Orc and he actually picks him. He doesn't like punch him, but he like palms his hand like this and he pushes Orc's shoulder and he pushes him. And Orc gets up and says, Look, man, I'm not going. I already told you. I don't care what you say. I'm going to the game. I'm here with you after. That's done. I'm done. And he walks out the door and he, he doesn't sign it, but he closes it. And then Jeremy's like, is anybody going to say anything? He's dropping us like a smelly sock. Are you serious? Oric. And he keeps watching. He's like, oh, okay. We just want to hear the crowd, your adoring fans, cheer your name. Instead of helping out your friends. And he closes the door and he starts to walk off. And this this, this part had me thinking last night. So right after, right after Oric walks out the room and starts to walk down the hallway to leave the building, Odd goes, hey, lay off him. He, he has his reason. And Jeremy's like, what are you talking about? He said, have you ever met Oric's dad? No, well, him and his mom are coming today to see his game. And in Org's dad's eyes, unless you're number one and everything, you're nothing to him. And since Org's grades aren't the best, the only way to really uh, make his dad proud is to be like number one in the soccer game. I'm like, oh, 
okay. That, I mean, that makes total sense. That, I mean, and he also mentioned that's why that's why Orange is training like crazy so he can be like number one in the soccer game. Okay, that makes sense. But you could have probably brought that up during the fight so they don't fight so much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you probably should have brought that up during the fight so they don't so they wouldn't be yelling. I mean, so they won't be yelling like that. But that, that is sad. That is true. There's probably lots of families out there to where you're, if you're not number one, you're just nothing to them, which is pretty sad. That, that's sad. Um, and then this is the point. Like, this is the sound I want to tell you. When they started arguing, and Jimmy got up, and he actually pushes Orc onto the side, and he's like, moves a little bit. I was really shocked. Oh, my bad. I started to move the camera a little bit. When he pushes him, I'm like, oh, man. Like, <laughs> during, like, this whole fight, I was like, oh, my goodness. I, I, like, I'm not even joking. Like, I rewind it, like, maybe two, maybe three times just to hear them yell and look at each other. Because, you know, like, they never fight. They're so good. And they just started yelling at each other like crazy in this episode. Just, wow. And when, when they all start walking to a Yoko, Jeremy's like, why couldn't Org just tell us that? And then Yumi's like, Org, tell us a secret? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Way too dumb. And we just, we just cut innocently from that to Oric chilling in the locker room by himself. And his whole team is in there. And Jim, and Jim walks out. And out of nowhere, that that Matt dude they were talking about, that new striker on the Lincoln High team, he comes out of nowhere and he's just standing there like Superman. Like he's going to do something. <laughs> like he's going to do something. I don't know who this guy is. But as soon as Jim comes out of camera, we see Matt coming, standing there like he's Superman. <laughs> who is this? <laughs> Obviously, they're like, who is this shit? <laughs> who is this man? He's <laughs> like, what the word? <laughs> who is this? And we just, we just cut, like, back to that. We cut to them in the sewers, you know, getting to Lyoko. Then we actually cut to the taco game starting a million to me and recording it. Then we cut to Jeremy and then getting to the factory and then him getting in the chair. And then we just cut to the soccer game playing for like two or five seconds. And then we cut right back to Lyoko, just cut, cut, cut. <laughs> Ridiculous. We just cut to a Yoko and Jeremy's talking to a little year. Um, he can tell that Xana is trying to gain power from a couple power stations around town. He can have his own countermeasure to make sure this doesn't happen, but you know, it's Xana. It's only going to last for so long. And then we cut right back to the game and Oric is running down the field with Matt. He kicks the ball to his teammate. His teammate, well, no, at first, some dude comes out of nowhere and does a slide move to kick Oric's foot, but he jumps and lands back on the ground. And he kicks the ball to his teammate. The teammate kicks it back to Oric. Oric kicks the ball into the goal. And Oric kicks the ball so hard that the whole screen turned white. <laughs> Literally, the whole screen started turning white. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> Oric kicks the ball, and the whole screen turned white. <laughs> I thought something happened to my TV for a second. But that's just how hard he kicked the ball. <laughs> that's just how hard he kicked the ball. <laughs> Anyway, Alita, I mean, not Alita, Jeremy sends on and Yumi to the Yoko, finally. And then we cut right back to Millie and Tamiya focusing on the game. It was nothing really, it was nothing really, um, important. It was just Millie, not Millie, it was Tamiya, um, just swooning over Oric because he had the camera recording and she just zoomed in on Oric like, wow, he's so handsome. And Millie's like, what are you doing? Focus on the game. <laughs> like, 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 yeah, it's like, what, like, what are you doing? We're supposed to be reporting the game, not Oric. Like, what, like, what are you doing? Anyway, we cut back to Jeremy. Right after that, it's just so many cuts. Just so many cuts. We cut right back to Jeremy. And Jeremy, te- I mean, that's how. Jeremy can see that Xana is gaining, like, he's starting to bypass some of his defenses. This is getting bad. He's trying to take over at least about 50 different power stations in the city. I think that's either before or after this. I think I think I messed up the order. But he, he sees something going on. Let me make sure I'm saying this right. So I don't confuse y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So um, Xana is going to use... Uh, Xana has to have some sort of electricity to make things flow. I said it too early. To make, to make things weightless and flow. And he's going to pinpoint his um, attack at the school in the science center and inside the building. So he like, we gotta make sure nobody's there. So he's like, oh, I'm after call Orc. And then while he's saying this, you know, Odd and Yumi and Alita are running around. So he's like, what? What's going on, Jimmy? Say that again. And then they used the exact. It was either one or two episodes ago. Either one or two. Where I was like, yo, Odd kicking off these rocks and jumping really high. That's pretty cool. They used that exact same animation, that exact same rock structure and everything with this. They just, they just, you know, um, did, like did a voice overlay. 
But look at this. Odd does that exact same animation in this episode that he did like one or two episodes ago. I just I noticed that when I was watching it. I'm like, yo, they, they were cutting corners. Ain't nothing wrong with cutting corners. I mean, like, you know, this is still a cool move when he just bounces off the rocks and then he just jumps. I was like, oh, wait. They did that exact same thing. They think they're slick. <laughs> they think they're slick. They really think they're slick. They did that exact same thing for one or two episodes ago. <laughs> like, they didn't really think they slick. Okay. Anyway, we um, we cut right back to the game, and it's halftime. And Oric walks over to the benches, and when, right before he gets to the benches, he... Oh, my goodness gracious. I nearly forget. We saw Oric's mom and dad. I didn't show y'all. <laughs> we literally saw them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, this is his mom and dad right here. <laughs> I was like... I knew I was, I was in the, literally, in the back of my mind, I'm like... I, while I was talking out loud, I'm forgetting something. I'm forgetting something. But as soon as he scored that goal... Where the whole screen turned white, his, we see his mom and dad. That's his dad. That's his mom. I can see where Org gets his looks from his mom, from his dad. But I can also see he got his hair from his mom. Cause his hair is more that color and this color. Pretty nice couple. You know, they don't really talk. Well, they said like one well, his dad said like one or two lines at the end of the episode. His mom doesn't really talk. But uh, let's uh, continue this episode. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Rock. Da da da. Okay, yeah. Millie to me a corner Oric. And they're like, hey Oric, uh, how does it feel for dominating Lincoln High six to three, huh? And then Oric, he's humble. He's not he's not bragging or nothing. He's like, Well, uh, you know, Lincoln High, he's there in the finals of us, so that means they're really good. You know, we just gotta keep on doing our teamwork and maybe we can win. Go team. And then he walks over to the banks. Well now first he looks at his mom and dad. He looks at the banks and then he sees Jeremy's calling him and he answers the phone and Jeremy's like, Yo, I've been calling you forever. He's like, I can't play the game and hold the phone, Jeremy. <laughs> like, you, know, you, know, you can't do both at the same time. And Jeremy apologizes because, you know, he like, oh, I found out why you wanted to go to the game. So the help of Ryoko, I'm sorry. I didn't know. And then he's like, well, what's going on, Jeremy? He, Jeremy tells Or about how Xana's going to pinpoint the waitlist attack on the science center. So you got to make sure nobody's inside. And Jeremy, and I'm not Or, I mean, not Jeremy. Or it's like, yeah, yeah, everybody's talking about watching the game. Are you sure? And then the halftime is over, and he put, he puts in his headphone. Well, he puts in one headphone, put his phone in his pocket, and he walks on the field, and looking at Matt right in front of him. And he looks at he but he looks back at the bleak, and he's like, yeah, everybody's on the at the game. Oh wait, Mrs. Hurt. And then Jeremy's like, ah, she's probably in there doing some experiments or something. We gotta get her out of there. And then he looks at his mom and dad. He's hearing Jeremy telling him he has to leave the game. He's looking at Matt, and you know, all he like panic because you know he wants to do this game to make his dad proud. And now Jimmy telling him he has to leave, and he's, he actually starts to panic and freak out a little bit. He's like, no, no, please, don't do it. no, not this, not now, not now, no, come on, that's it. no, no, come on, please, please. He starts to freak out a little bit, and he hangs up on Jeremy, and he just starts to stand there. The game, the game starts, they blow the whistle, everybody starts to run, but he just starts to stand there. And he's like breathing, hello, what's going on with Ward? Is he, is he good? <laughs> you know, everybody's really confused about what in the world is going on with Ward. And then Oric gets back into the game, and he fakes an injury. And Matt, like, pushes him, like, a tiny bit, but he fakes, like, his leg is uh, broke or something. So he starts to limp over to the bleachers. I mean, yeah, limp, limp over to the bleachers. And it's funny because Jim was like, Oric, you can't do this to me. No, please, no. Oh, like, what is your problem? <laughs> like, you know, from every, from Jim's perspective, he doesn't know Oric did this on purpose. So, you know, he's looking like, oh, this dude just pushed him so hard, he probably twisted his ankle or something. And he's yelling at him, like, Oric, come on, man, you can't twist Come on, your bones can't break on me. <laughs> your bones can't break on me. What are you doing? Come on, what are you uh, <laughs> And Oric's like, leave me alone. Now, Sissy, only one kind of smart out here, because she doesn't believe this for a minute. So she starts to leave. There's one little funny moment where Nicholas and her be like, Sissy, you can't leave. You're the only cheerleader. I don't know why that's the only cheerleader. <laughs> I don't know why. But Sissy says, hey, um, just stand up and cheer and dance whenever it works, or whenever somebody scores a goal. They're going to love it. <laughs> they're gonna look and we cut to uh my bad i was like what in the world uh we cut to uh yumi and odd and they finally get to the tower it's like a walking distance like literally just one pathway straight towards the tower and there's three wasps guarding it so they run out yumi takes out her fan throws it takes out one of wasps then or i mean not or, odd you know laser arrow and he kills one and two wasps are dead from the three. So there's only one wasp left. That one wasp comes from behind and trucks them. <laughs> it literally just trucks them. And it's funny because, you know, they usually just, any enemy just uses the lasers. But <laughs> I guess I was just so mad. 
I guess they were just so mad. They're like, you know what? We're gonna truck him. <laughs> I'm gonna truck him. <laughs> he just trucks on. And just <laughs> it was funny because he just trucks them like a truck. Like a, like a football player. Like a football. Boom! <laughs> like a football player. He just trucks like a football player. That was pretty funny. That made me laugh. Anyway, right after that, they hide behind a rock with Alita. And then Yumi's like, okay, well, there's only one watch less. You know, all you take it out, I'll bring Alita. And Yumi's like, oh, no, there's a whole swarm coming. Okay, new tactic. So, um, oh, it's like, Yumi, she's actually used her telekinesis to levitate some rocks around him like a barrier. While Odd is shooting at the shooting at the wasp, and it's funny because Yumi just said like a whole swarm of wasps are coming. He was not joking. It does an outward side where it's like a they are so rounded, man. I mean they are so rounded. And um, since there's so many wasps around, Yumi has to keep gaining. I mean grabbing more and more rocks so they don't get shot. And the more rocks she levitates, the weaker she's getting, the more tired she's getting. Because anytime she uses this ability, even on one thing. She gets tired pretty quickly. And look at this, folks. And look at this. Like, when he said there was, like, a lot of wasps coming around, I mean, a whole swarm, he was not joking. I mean, he was not joking. There was a whole swarm of wasps just coming in on them hard. Coming in on them hard. Anyway, Jer we cut to um, Jeremy and Oric talking to him. Oric called. Jeremy like, hey, I left the game. Oh, you're making a big sacrifice, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, Jeremy mentions that he made his own countermeasure to... Um, Xana making everything weightless, and he like be careful though because you know he has to he has to use it sparingly. As soon as Xana does it, he has to use it. As soon as Orc walks into the building, he's like, "No, nah, nothing happening." What the? Blah! And then Xana instantly turns on the gravity. He starts to float. Jeremy turns on his countermeasure. He lands on the ground. But when he landed on the ground, Mr. Turks didn't land on her feet. She knocked. She got passed out. Then <laughs> she passes out. And then we cut again to the wasp attacking Odd and Yumi. And like I said, she's putting on more and more rocks on top of them so they don't get shot. Because at first they only had that one barrier, now they got that was three on the top. But she's getting more tired. She's getting more tired than that. And Xana turns on the weightlessness again. And while he's in while he's in like the air, Oric is able to open the door, run in there, grab Mrs. Hurts. I mean not odd. Um Jeremy turns turns off, they land, and then Xana turns it back on, and Oric hits his head. And it's funny because he like passes out for a moment, and when he wakes up, Sissy's falling. Cause she was following him this whole time. Sissy, Sissy's falling. He's like, huh? What is that? Oh snap, Sissy! And he's able to he's able to grab her really quickly before she hits the ground or hits the side of the wall because they're like sort of gravity is sort of switching around. He's like, huh? What's going on? Oh snap, Sissy! <laughs> he's able to grab her just in time before she hits the side of the wall. I don't know. It's confusing because you know the gravity is making. Everything weird is kind of confusing. <laughs> anyway, the ending of the episode, um, and lead not lead is Yumi. She gets really tired from levitating all these rocks, and all the rocks fall, and they're like, "Oh no, this is bad." And then Alita goes, "Okay, I gotta do it." And then we cut to Alita, and Alita's just um singing and making uh, her own pathway really quickly. I mean, like it's really like, oh, it's really quickly. It's crazy, and they're like, "Alita, no, what are you doing?" And all the wasps stop attacking Ah and Yumi and instantly gang up on Alita and she falls and while she's falling in the smoke, she's shooting <laughs> they just keep shooting at her over and over and over again. But then that was just a fake. <laughs> it was just a fake and she was to do Koleyoko. So right before she like does Koleyoko, um I so I'm saying like it seems out of order because it said low storage. I know my computer's gonna shut off on me. Um right before it goes to Koleyoko, um we get the perspective of Oric. So Xana turns, Xana's able to take over 50 power stations, so he has mad power, and he turns on the weightlessness, and everybody starts to float up in the sky, and then Jeremy tells Oryx, stay inside the building, he turned on the weightlessness, I can't turn it off, he's like, huh, wait a second, the game, and he starts to freak out, and he literally jumps through a window, and everybody, he sees everybody floating up in the air, and his mom and dad are, well, his dad is clinging onto the bleachers while he's holding his mom, but Oryx's dad loses his grip, and he starts to float, but Oryx is able to grab him. And Oric can't really hold on too long. But before his dad like let go of Oric, he says, "Son, I'm really proud of you. Really, I am." And he lets go of Oric, and he starts to float. And Oric's like, "No!" And Oric that let go of the bleachers while they're floating. He's there able to do Cole Yoko. And then we just cut back to the day before because you know time travel. <laughs> you know the return, return to the past. 
And then we just cut to the game starting over again. Just, you know, it's Lincoln High. Uh, let's do this. Woo, go Oreg. And then they run over it and kick the ball, and that's the end of the episode. Oh, yeah, that was one uh, one little uh, funny joke. Not a joke, but um, while they were, like, cheering for Oreg, um, R goes, go, um, Oreg, you're the, you're the king. Or you're, like, you're the, you're the champ. You're the champ of the world. Yeah, 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 you're the king of the world. And Jeremy goes, which world? Uh, odd? Well, bro, well, both, Jeremy. Both. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little corny, but whatever. Uh, let me show you real quick before it cuts off on me. Where the clone of Alito is just making the bridge super fast, and then when she gets knocked off, they just start to gang up on her like crazy. I mean, look at this. They just start, they just start to shoot her, even though she's falling to her death anyway. I mean, like, this is crazy. <laughs> like, they're just shooting her like crazy, even though she's already dead. So that was just a okay. You know, that was just a okay. good news. <laughs> you know, uh, thank goodness. And this is the scene where um, Oric literally jumps through the window and he realizes that the you know everybody's floating up in the sky, and that um, his mom and dad are going to be in danger. Oh no, I think he's already outside at this point. Oh yeah, he's already in danger. And I found it funny because you know it's it's like his dad never really cared about. Oh, okay, he cared about Oric, but he never really showed him the respect until the soccer game, which is like, yay, good, he's getting the respect now. But at the same time, I mean, you didn't give it to him before you know so that's kind of messed up that's kind of jacked up you know what i'm saying but anyway um this is when Oric he literally jumps through the window to get to his mom and dad which is pretty sweet yeah that, that was pretty sweet when he gets to his mom and dad um <laughs> i'm like really messing up the order here okay here it is this is when alita's clone is making the bridge super fast this is like the after credit scene right here super fast and we know Alita, she takes like a whole 12 minutes to like sit down and sing to make a wall. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it takes like a minute. You know, you know sometimes it's like really fast, sometimes it takes a good minute for that to happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But this is when Oric jumps through the window to get to his mom and dad. This is pretty crazy. And then he's able to grab his mom and dad right before they float up. Well, they still float up in the air. But, um, you know. <laughs> Right here, his dad loses his grip and Oric's able to catch him real quick right before they flew up in the air. It's pretty sweet, man. Pretty sweet. But like I said, I was the end of the episode because um, I already said everything else. I think I said that quote Wong from Ando when he said, You're the best of both worlds. Oh, you're the king of the world or whatever. I think I said that wrong, if I'm not mistaken. Let's rock over it. Come on, world champion. Yeah, you're the world champion. Which world? Oh, both, you hear me? Oh. <laughs> oh, snap. Things in the TV. I didn't notice that. Whew. This episode, sorry, I was going so fast. This literally at 28 minutes, it cut off on me. Usually, I'm going to go to like 30. So, I guess I got to do something with my storage or whatever. After, so, this is my second time doing it. Oh, oh man. And it's a low storage of 25 minutes. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Yo, I don't want to do this for a third time. <laughs> I really don't want to do this. I'm going to start talking fast. And, uh, but I, I, I get it too. I get it too. I just messed up the order a little bit. <clears throat> messed up the order a little bit. But uh, that was the episode. Uh, thank you all for watching. I thank you all out there for being wonderful and beautiful and handsome human beings. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Whew, man. That was, uh, that was something. <laughs> that was something else. <laughs>